When you think about Easter candies in the U.S., what comes to mind? Chocolate bunnies, jelly beans, cream eggs, or perhaps you think about one of the most popular and yet divisive Easter season confections, Peeps. Peeps is celebrating its 70th anniversary this year, although this is actually the anniversary of when the company Just Born bought the brand, not when Peeps first appeared. Peeps have been around since at least the 1920s, and they weren't alone. There were once many companies that used to make sugar-coated marshmallow animals, especially at Easter. So how did Peeps manage to survive when so many other companies didn't? This is the story of Peeps. Candy has long been a staple of Easter celebrations in the United States, with Easter as the second biggest candy holiday in the country, and confectioners rose to the occasion. As the Lancaster Intelligencer reported in 1928, huge chocolate bunnies and eggs in abundance crowd confectioners' windows. Announcing the approach of Easter, tiny yellow marshmallow chicks, chocolate pigs, and jelly eggs in all the gay colors, named eggs large and beautifully decorated, hollow eggs filled with other candies, all herald the oncoming season, which is next to only Christmas in brisk business activity. For many years, these Easter candies were typically handcrafted and elaborate. Chocolate was poured into molds and then covered in intricate decorations made from frosting. Jelly eggs were cast using small egg-shaped impressions, and rows of marshmallow chicks and bunnies were hand-piped, dusted in colored sugar or chocolate, and left to dry for hours in order to set. The process for making these candies was time-consuming and labor-intensive. Among these candy manufacturers was R.E. Rhoda Candy Company. Originally founded in 1908 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Rhoda was eager to carve out a chunk of the Easter candy market proclaiming itself as the Jelly Egg House of America and makers of the most beautifully decorated Easter line. A catalog from the 1920s showcases the company's chocolate eggs, bunnies, roosters, pigeons, pigs, and elephants, jelly beans, and of course, Peeps, shown here as a chocolate-covered marshmallow chick. Peeps were originally made by hand using pastry bags filled with some 15 pounds of warmed marshmallows the wives of Pennsylvania farmers piped out chick shapes on wax paper coated in sugar one by one. The peeps were then covered with colored sugar and decorated with sugar icing eyes, all done by hand. Then the gelatin and the marshmallows had to set. The entire process from start to finish took 27 hours. And it was painful. Francis Safranick told Susan Ruiz of The Morning Call, the girls used to go home with swollen red wrists. It was hard work squeezing those pastry bags. They would go home and soak their hands in cold water, only to come back the next day and start all over again. The arduous process of making peeps might have spelled doom for the marshmallow candies, if it wasn't for one thing. Rhoda was bought by another candy company who wanted to do things differently. In 1953, Ari Rhoda was acquired by Jess Bourne, the company who made Mike and Ike and Hot Tamales candies. Jess Bourne was more interested in Rhoda's jelly beans, but had decided to continue making Rhoda's marshmallow candies as well. But Jess Bourne's Ira Bob Bourne, the son of the company's founder, who had taken over as president, wanted to make some drastic changes to how peeps were made. For starters, the hand piping had to go. Bourne wanted the process to be automated. Some were incredulous at the idea. According to an interview Bob Bourne gave to John Harris of the Morning Call newspaper, he was told by a Rhoda candy salesman, don't you think that this company that has been making these things for 50 years would have automated it? Bourne replied, I don't know, but we're gonna do it. The salesman responded, all you young guys think you're Edison. Edison or not, it was a daunting task. Bob Bourne studied the movements of the workers on the marshmallow line, trying to figure out how to replicate their repetitive movements. He recalled to AP writer Joanne Levijo in 2003, There was a lot of trial and error. We made so many samples, at first some of them coming down the line looked like seals, so we had to try again. It took Bourne and his team nine months to develop a machine that could squeeze hot marshmallow liquid into three-dimensional chick shapes, extruded in rows of five. The peeps were then sent through a shower of colored sugar, given eyes made from edible wax, and dropped into cardboard boxes. 
With automation, the Peeps manufacturing process went from 27 hours to just six minutes. Automation was not the only thing about Peeps that changed. You might be surprised to learn that the chicks once had wings. Now there are a few different stories for how Peeps lost their wings. In one version, there was a technical problem with the machine and a bunch of peeps went out to stores without their usual wings. Another story seems more intentional. Just Born decided to test market wingless peeps. Either way, the lack of wings didn't seem to bother consumers who bought them anyways. And peep chicks have been wingless ever since. Peeps also expanded into bunny shapes based on molds created by Bob Bourne in his basement workshop. The decision to mechanize Peeps production was crucial. By the 1990s, the other companies who continued to make marshmallow candies by hand had gone out of business. This reportedly left Just Born as the largest producer of specialty marshmallow products in the U.S. Although Rhoda may have emphasized its Easter line, the company made marshmallow novelties for other holidays as well, including pumpkins and cats for Halloween, and trees and snowmen for Christmas. Over the years, Just Born has attempted to expand the Peeps line outside of the Easter season. One particularly notable effort took place in 2014, when the company introduced Peeps Minis, its first year-round product. Ad campaigns for Peeps Minis proclaimed, every day is a holiday, meant to separate Peeps not only from Easter, but all holidays. But it's been hard to differentiate the Peeps brand from spring and Easter. And despite its best effort, the majority of the 2 billion peeps Just Born makes every year are sold during the Easter season. Peeps are divisive. Some people hate them, while others are extremely loyal to the sugary marshmallow blobs. Even those who like peeps don't always agree with how they should be eaten. Some think that they taste best fresh, while others like to open or poke a small hole in the packaging, letting them get stale before they actually eat them. Whatever side you're on, it can't be denied that Peeps are an Easter icon, with numerous flavors, brand crossovers, and even elaborate dioramas made using Peeps chicks and bunnies. And after approximately 100 years, Peeps have proven themselves capable of not only surviving, but thriving, with Peeps standing as the best-selling non-chocolate Easter candy in the United States. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look back at the history of Peeps. I have not had Peeps since I was a little kid, like maybe first grade. I remember there was some kind of event at my school where they gave every student three packages of Peeps, which I of course promptly went home and ate in a single sitting. I was super sick and I essentially just never ate them again. But I bought some for this video and I'm excited to give them a try as an adult. Now if you like this video and you would like to hear me talk about the history of other companies and their brands, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel below. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.